SpaceX is approaching the final preparations for the second orbital test flight conducted by Starship. If this test flight is successful, SpaceX will be one step closer to its mission of lunar exploration. Prior to this significant event, SpaceX has also unexpectedly unveiled a new design for the human landing system Starship, unlike any other. So, what are these new changes? Why is SpaceX built it differently? Stay tuned as we dive into this and lots more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. For those who may not be aware, the appearance of the nose cone, believed to be a mock-up of the Starship HLS Moonlander, has moved to the test site in early August. This marks a step in testing life support systems for the Starship HLS variant. Since then, the activities inside the nose cone haven't been publicly disclosed, but we can speculate that they are somewhat preparing for upcoming tests next week. Why do I say that? It's because one of the latest activities we can observe on the exterior of SpaceX's cone nose. Images show SpaceX workers carefully applying a coat of white paint to the nose cone. What is the purpose of this paint layer? There are indeed many questions surrounding this. Some speculate that SpaceX is applying the paint to make it look more like an HLS variant rather than a standard Starship. However, others counter this argument by raising doubts about the accuracy of this nose cone. If it isn't indeed an HLS variant, why hasn't SpaceX removed the heat shield tiles or painted the entire nose cone white? To address these concerns, it's essential to remember that this is just a mock-up of the HLS crew cabin, and it doesn't need to replicate the HLS's external appearance precisely. SpaceX's main goal here is to assess the systems and interior design of the crew cabin. This is evident from earlier images when the HLS nose cone was moved, revealing numerous electrical boxes, a control panel, and various switches and indicator lights. So, SpaceX isn't necessarily required to remove the heat shield tiles from the nose cone surface. Such a task would be time-consuming and labor-intensive. Next, the application of white paint might give the nose cone an appearance of resembling the front section of the Starship HLS. However, the primary purpose of this paint job is not to achieve that similarity. Most rockets and spacecraft are typically painted in either white or darker colors. White's favored because it helps maintain a cooler temperature for the vehicle before a launch, which is particularly advantageous when exposed to scorching sunlight. Additionally, maintaining the rocket's body temperature reduces fuel evaporation and enhances overall safety. Anything that can help keep the rocket cooler without increasing its weight becomes a cost-saving measure. These are the effects of painting a rocket white. As for the nose cone, which is placed outside the environment, the ability to absorb heat from sunlight could affect the interior tests. Therefore, painting a significant portion of it white may be intended to reflect sunlight, making the nose cone cooler. While we've made a significant discovery about the HLS nose cone, SpaceX has announced a road closure scheduled for September 7th. What's even more intriguing is that the appearance of SPMT vehicles beneath Ship 26 on the night of September 8th, suggesting that Ship 26 may be destined for the orbital launch mount for testing. As we know, S-26 is one of the variants that look different from other Starship iterations. Firstly, it lacks a heat shield. Since the orbital Starship testing phase in 2020-21, all completed ships have been fitted with approximately 10,000 black ceramic heat tiles. Eventually, these tiles will shield the spacecraft from the intense heat generated during re-entry into Earth's atmosphere at orbital speeds. Ship 26 also has no flaps. Since SpaceX first fully assembled a Starship in October 2020, every ship the company's completed has four large flaps and form-fitting aero covers installed. Starships need flaps to steer and orient themselves during orbital re-entries. They also need flaps to control themselves during exotic landing maneuvers, which requires ship to freefall belly down and aggressively flip into a vertical orientation for propulsive landings. Finally, and perhaps most intriguingly, Ship 26 lacks any form of payload bay, which is why it appears more streamlined and compact compared to any of the original Starship designs. The end result is a smooth, featureless Starship that looks like a steel bullet, can't return to Earth, and can't deploy satellites. However, SpaceX clearly intended to build Ship 26 and is now preparing to qualify it for flight. In truth, Ship 26 possesses the necessary characteristics of a lunar variant. Hence, the relocation of Ship 26 to SpaceX's test site is a clear indication of their plans for the work on the Starship HLS. 
they might conduct engine tests, assess component stability, perform hardware modifications, or perhaps simply apply a coat of white paint to Ship 26. All these new signs indicate that work on the Starship HLS variant has progressed to certain stages. And this progress may become even more apparent when the Starship spacecraft takes off successfully. If that launch does proceed smoothly, Starship HLS could potentially make its debut in early next year and might even be ready for the Artemis mission by the end of the same year. However, SpaceX still relies on the FAA's approval. Since its first launch in the spring, SpaceX has been busy making updates to both its Starship rocket as well as the infrastructure around the launch pad. They added a water deluge system at the base of the orbital launch mount to protect the pad from the damage seen during the first launch attempt. Teams also added a hot staging ring to the top of the Super Heavy booster to alter the way that the first and second stages of the rocket separate during its ascension. According to previous sources, SpaceX submitted its final mishap investigation report to the FAA over the summer, following its unsuccessful launch attempt on April 20th. Part of the SpaceX-led mishap investigation that's being overseen by the FAA. An agency spokesperson told in a statement on July 28 that its oversight is to ensure SpaceX complies with its FAA-approved mishap investigation plan and other regulatory requirements. A mishap investigation is designed to further enhance public safety. It'll determine the root cause of the event and identify corrective actions the operator must implement to avoid a recurrence of the event, the spokesperson said. Because of their interests as well, both NASA and the National Transportation Safety Board also have an official observer status to the investigation. As of now, we still don't have a clear announcement regarding FAA updates and additional requirements for SpaceX before the agency grants another launch license for Starship. Therefore, the expected timeline of Starship's launch soon is no longer certain. There's also the outstanding lawsuit brought by the Center for Biological Diversity, the American Bird Conservancy, the Surfrider Foundation, Save RGV, Rio Grande Valley, and the Carrizo Nation of Texas. According to the most recent court filings on July 25th, a joint status report is due to the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia by October 27th. Jared Margolis, the lead attorney for CBT, told Spaceflight Now in a statement on September 6th that the administrative record is set to be filed by the end of the month. After the contents of the record are agreed upon, dates for filing summary judgment motions will then be established, likely taking place over the fall and winter. Margolis added that they're looking at other options. If the FAA allows SpaceX to continue with additional launches before they've complied with the requirements of the National Environmental Policy Act, including a supplemental analysis to address the April 20th launch explosion and the subsequent changes to the launch program. As far as the recent tests and potential for another launch, we believe that such activities violate National Environmental Policy Act and the Endangered Species Act, both of which require supplemental analysis as described above, and preclude such activities while the supplemental analysis is pending to preserve the status quo, Margolis said. We therefore remain very concerned that FAA has not made clear that no further launches will be permitted until all applicable environmental laws are complied with. To sum things up, the FAA has not yet provided satisfactory explanations for the issue. Therefore, SpaceX's Starship might take some more time before proceeding with the orbital launch. That's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and did learn something new. Please do let us know what you think in the comments down below because your feedback is very important to us and ultimately helps us make better videos for you to watch. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you next time. Goodbye.